Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I need to replace the battery on my E65 7 Series. I recently did a 140, 150 mile trip, um, came home, parked the car up for two days, and when I came out to start the car, I was greeted with this. Damn it. So as you can see, the battery um, has had it. Now, I've had um, a few warning signs of this uh, for the last month, five weeks or so. Um, stupid little electrical niggles, like windows not working properly, sat nav playing up, that sort of thing. All of these kind of problems, especially on this car, which is uh, an electrical nightmare at the best of times, um, they're all caused by um, a failing battery. Now, I've not had to replace a battery in this car, and I've had this car for four years, so the battery that's in it um, has done well. Okay, so on uh, any BMW made uh, pretty much after 2002, um, they all require programming to the car, so registering. Um, uh, if you don't register the battery to the car, the DME assumes that the old battery is still fitted to the car and charges it accordingly. These cars are quite clever and the DME will um, will adjust the charging rate depend, dependent upon the age of the uh, age of the battery and adjust it accordingly uh, to try and uh, increase the longevity of the battery. Um, if you don't register a new one, um, what happens is the DME, the DME should I say, um, doesn't know that you fitted a new one and assumes that the old one is still fitted and charges it assuming it's an old battery. Um, that'll cause you problems uh, and you'll probably shorten the life of the battery quite significantly. Anyway, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to swap the battery out, uh, get it changed over, and then we'll look at the actual registration process. Um, fitting the battery, um, I'm not going to film that because I want to keep this a fairly generic BMW video because the actual registration process will be the same um, across all the models. So I'll get the battery switched out, and then what we'll do, we'll look at the registration process. <laughs> Okay, so what I've done, I've uh, changed the battery in the boot and you know, I've put everything back together. And um, yeah, so what we're doing now, uh, coming into the car and what we need to do is register the battery. Now to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a program called ISTA-D um, on this little laptop here. And what I need to do is obviously plug in the, uh, the connector here into the OBD port so that the, uh, the software can communicate with the car. So, on this particular one, it's down here on the uh, on the A post. Just got to plug it in. Just there, you get a little light on, just like so. Okay, right. What I need to do is get rid of the warning message there. I need to put the key in the ignition and press the button so that everything comes on. I'm not starting the engine, I'm just turning on, um, basically putting it to what would be the accessory position on a regular key. And then I'm gonna fire up ISTA D. Now, um, this, is, uh, this isn't the fastest laptop in the world. This has only got about two, two gig of RAM, I think. And um, I only use it for this, uh, for this purpose. Um, it will take a little while to boot up. So what I'll do, I'll be sharing my screen with you. Um, Situations like this here, where, where, uh, what you can see on your screen right now, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward through all of these just so that we're not keeping uh, keeping you sitting here waiting for everything to load. Okay, finally we've loaded. What we need to do next is we need to click on operations and we need to tell the car to read out the vehicle data. Um, you can input the VIN manually, but if you um, do it this way, it does it for you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a complete identification. Uh, 
and then we get all of the um, all the various information for the car coming up as it reads out the DME. Now it's going to read each of the modules and decide which ones have got fault codes. As you can see, there's quite a few. A lot of those fault codes will be caused by the fact that the battery was uh, was goosed. So we may find that after we've um, registered the battery that most of those will go, if not all of them. Okay, so we're finally loaded up. Um, the car is uh, talking to the laptop and we've uh, read out all the modules. What we can do now is we can actually register the battery. In order to do so, what we need to do across the top, we need to select vehicle management. Under vehicle management, select service functions, and then we need to select body. In body, we need to go to voltage supply and then select battery and then it will come up register battery replacement select register battery replacement click start search okay so what we'll do select register battery display replacement click display and it'll tell us the procedure and from here on it's pretty much a case of just following the instructions Right, what we want to do is we need to um, obviously register the battery replacement. Um, what we can do here, you can select the, dis the display of history of the battery replacement so you can see how many times the mileage at which it was replaced, etc., etc. Or you can select to end this function. But what we want to do is select number two, register battery replacement. Then click next. Okay, the battery replacement is entered in the power module in the next test step. Click next. The battery replacement was successfully entered in the power module. The following data are now entered in the power module. Last battery replacement. Okay, this is quite interesting. So this tells me that the battery has never been registered um, for this car, which uh, is, is ludicrous, because um, the battery that I've taken off has never lasted um, 15 years, uh, which is how old this car is. So um, at some point the battery has been replaced and hasn't been registered correctly, which could be one of the reasons why it's gone down. Um, so according to this, um, the last battery replacement was at 255648 kilometers. Um, and that's, uh, that's all there is to it. So click next, service function finished. And that is registration of the battery. Okay, what I need to do now is just um, close down the program, turn off the laptop and disconnect it from the car. And then that is the job done. It really is that easy. Um, guys, hopefully you uh, found this interesting, um, certainly found it useful. This process is the same across um, uh, all cars. You can do, do this with um, any BMW, um, it, it, you know, you, you um, just follow exactly the steps that um, it displays in the program and you, and you can't go wrong. Um, what I did want to do, I was hoping to perhaps use Carly to be able to register this battery. Unfortunately, um, due to the antiquated way that the 7 Series manages its power, um, 
I couldn't use Carly on the 7 Series. It gives me a warning when I try. Um, it basically says uh, something along the lines of, due to the manner in which the 7 Series um, manages its power system, uh, Carly cannot use to be uh, to register batteries or something, something like that, which was quite annoying. Um, because I know I can do it on the one series, I've been able to do it on my uh, my previous three series and stuff like that. So yeah, that was uh, that was a bit of an annoyance, but um, nothing I couldn't overcome by using Ista. Anyway, guys, um, hope you, hope you uh, you like the video, and I will see you all again very very soon for the next one. Thank you very much. Bye bye now.